That was incredibly creepy. I just want to knock back. This is possibly the creepiest place I've ever been. I want to believe in ghosts. I don't know if I believe in ghosts. I am a skeptic. Huh, you don't believe in ghosts? Watch this. When did he learn to do that? Welcome to the something or other tour. something or other tour. We're in Locke, California, but this time night has fallen. We're gonna walk around and talk about some of the shady past of this hidden gem in the Sacramento Delta region. This is one part of a three-part series on Locke. We've been staying here at the Locke Bed and Breakfast. That's our balcony. I'm with my cousin Steve-O, who you guys all know and love. I've heard people call Locke the most haunted town in California. It's a hotbed of paranormal activity and ghost hunters. Tons of paranormal investigators have been here. You've seen it on TV, you've seen it on YouTube. So I had to come see for myself what's going on here at Locke. I told more of the story in the daytime episode I did here. I'll give you a short version. Officially, the town was founded in 1915, but records actually go back to about the 1890s. So there was some buildings here. It was called Lockport on a guy named George W. Locke's private land. He allowed this little town to be built and a lot of Chinese immigrants set up shop here. So this town has a huge Chinese cultural influence. Although there's more to the history than that, which is hard to find. The history here was not well recorded. You see, there was a seedy underbelly here in Locke. All the cats creeping around definitely add to the ambiance. Now, the first thing when you walk around here is you feel like there's always eyes on you. There's been people continually watching us from their balconies, peeking out of windows. I mean, day, night, anytime. There's people watching. You hear voices, you hear creaks, booms, you hear animals. I hear what sounds to be like an owl right now. We heard cats fighting, dogs barking, pigeons in some of these abandoned units, even as dead and empty as it is right here late at night. You don't feel alone at all. A local we talked to named Ken says that they see all kinds of orbs in the schoolhouse here. I peeked in, I didn't see any orbs, unfortunately. Nearly every building in this town has some sort of brothel, opium den, gambling den, something illicit, something illegal. It was on private land. It was out on the Delta. Because of that, a lot of times law enforcement sort of looked the other way. So this was this hidden oasis that they called California's Monte Carlo. You could come gamble, get you a room, some companionship, call it a night. Goodbye, kitty. Now, Al's place here has been operating for a very long time as a bar. So I'm sure this has been the site of many kerfluffles, if you know what I mean. This sleepy little seedy town is tucked away right here in the Sacramento River. It's right across the road. Because there were so many brothels, very little oversight, very lawless. They said that sometimes prostitutes would be murdered, their bodies taken across the road, dumped into the river. I don't know of any reports substantiating that, but that is the urban legend. And it's very possible that that could happen and not ever be documented. So of course, Locke had a large, sizable Chinese population and they helped form the town and they had a huge cultural impact, which is recognized to this day, like with this Chinese school here. Because of that, there's a lot of tales of the Tong Mafia being present here. Now, Tong really just meant community. So in all the towns with a sizable Chinese population, Chinatown in San Francisco, for example, because of the discrimination they faced, the lack of resources, and the limitations put on them legally and culturally, they formed these Tongs, basically either protect the community, help the community, give them resources, teach them ways to navigate, this new American society, and some of that led to organized crime. So it's very likely 
that the Chinese Tong Mafia here in Lok also was involved in the gambling, the brothels, the opium dens. Although I personally always think that the tales are often exaggerated and overblown, sometimes in a discriminatory or just naive way. Because of that Tong Mafia, a lot of people say that the spirits present here are not friendly. They do not take kindly to outsiders and they can actually be violent to people. Uh, something just fell out of that tree right as I talked about the violent spirits. And I was just about to say, I've been here a couple days and spirit has not attacked me yet. Well, was that a spirit attacking me for talking about it? I don't know. That's your guys' call to make. A lot of the stories of the craziness, the shenanigans, the Tong Mafia in Lock were in this building here. The Dai Loi, it's a former gambling hall. Now it's a museum. Paranormal investigators from all over the world try to get access to the Dai Loi gambling hall. This is where they say the violent ghosts were pushing people up against walls and such. I haven't felt anything yet. How many people were here getting cheated out of their earnings? working the agriculture, working the orchards around here. But when I've been in here, I haven't felt anything violent. I haven't felt anything at all, really. But you can sort of sense the ghosts of the past with every creaking floorboard, with every little breeze, with every footstep. Dude, the skunk just flared up at me. That so far is the scariest thing to happen. Oh shoot, Cole, I didn't know you were here, dude. Oh. Thought Cole made the trip. All right, Steven, we gotta go. Wait, that's not Steven. That's Steven. Actually, this looks more like Cole. No, don't fight. So there's still kerfluffles. Tensions are still riding high. There's some characters here, for sure. And I promise you guys, you might not believe me, but that was not a gag. We did not set that up. <laughs> what was that? With the way he said that, you guys are definitely gonna think we set that up. <laughs> I'm kind of, I wanted to go down there and film, but I'm a little creeped out now. But he came out from like an alleyway, like stumbling and like groaning. Directly behind Ooh. me. <laughs> don't do that again. Oh, come on. No, seriously. I will gouge your eyes. Don't stop crying. Anyways, behind me was the Locke Memorial Park dedicated to the Chinese that helped build Locke. But apparently in this lot, used to be another saloon or gambling den, which was the site of Locke's most famous murder. Talked about it in the other episode, but this whole area had a levee system built. So this river road right here is basically a big levee. This is the Marina Bow House, Sacramento River's on the other side. So when you go into Locke, it goes downhill. So the, now we're up above the park, but the building used to reach out to River Road here. Now that particular night in this gambling den, they were playing blackjack. Fred Chisholm was visiting some friends in Oakland, but they came up to Locke to have a good time. Again, this was California's Monte Carlo. It was a little forbidden enclave. According to the reports, Fred Chisholm was cheating. The dealer noticed that the cards didn't add up from his deck. And apparently since he was caught, Fred Chisholm grabbed his winnings, his supposed winnings, and ran out the door. Ran out this way, on River Road, out towards Walnut Grove that way. The dealer and a man named George Shin chased them about 200 yards that way. Fred Chisholm was shot at least two times. They took him to see a doctor in nearby Walnut Grove, but he didn't make it. You can sort of imagine a group of angry men running down the road and about 200 yards down, a bunch of shots fired. Unfortunately, Fred apparently had a wife and kids still waiting for him back in Oregon. 
George Shin was found guilty of the murder. The coroner said that Fred Chisholm did have some contraptions on his arms that professional cheaters would use. George Shin, the dealer, also got in trouble. A stage driver that helped the dealer get away got in trouble. And Fred Chisholm's buddies disappeared to Stockton and refused to ever talk about it. Fred Chisholm is buried in the Odd Fellows Cemetery in Sacramento. George Shin got a life sentence. And even though Fred was cheating, it was determined that it did not justify cold-blooded murder, shooting him in the back as he ran down Old River Road here. The justice system was pretty harsh, and it's hard not to believe that the fact that George Shin and the dealer were both Asian didn't come to play. There was still heavy, heavy discrimination against Asian people at that time. It was a very controversial case that went back and forth between multiple defendants. This butcher shop was the scene of what was probably Locke's most tragic event. A young boy, about six years old, named Joe King, was playing with a friend in the back room here. But this building was a market and butcher shop that Joe King's parents ran. They were inside playing in the living quarters. His friend went home, got his father's pistol, came back to play with Joe King with the gun, and accidentally shot young Joe. So rest in peace to young Joe King. Clinks, clangs. I don't know what any of these sounds are. Now there's just pops. So there's some bangs, there's some work being done over at the Marina Boathouse. Right on the other side of that is the Sacramento River. We're south of Sacramento. If you want to see more Sacramento videos, I just did a bunch. Did a video in old abandoned Arco Arena. Did a video at Dorothea Puente's murder house. And I got some more upcoming Sacramento stuff on the way. One thing that creeped us out is on the edge of town, there's like some sort of water pump. And every once in a while it makes a big bang. But the banging and clanging remind me of my favorite lock mystery urban legend. The legend of the Bok Bok Man. Inhabitants claim to hear the sound of Bok Bok throughout the night all over town. But the mystery isn't really a mystery at all. The Bok Bok Man was a person employed by the town that would walk around at night and give a bok on this wooden instrument-like thing to signify the time of night. Two boks, 2 a.m. Three boks, 3 a.m. So people that lived here, and especially the kids who grew up, would have these outlandish stories of the Bok Bok Man because they would hear him walking up and down these streets throughout the night, tapping on his little wooden instrument. So the Bok Bok Man would be walking up and down this street, through the alleyways, through the back alleys. And if you listen closely, you could hear what time it was by the taps of his mallet. And the Bok Bok Man didn't just keep time. As I mentioned in every Wild West and Frontier video I've ever done, fire was a huge threat to towns like this. So the Bok Bok Man would walk around, make sure nothing was on fire, so not only did you know the time when he tapped his mallet, but you also knew that everything was A-OK. -okay. All's quiet on the Western Front, you know? Predating the Bok Bok Men, they had Knight's Watchmen. First one on record being named George Carlton, and he patrolled these streets. George Carlton was Welsh and German. He was here as early as 1916 which is about the time that the town was officially founded when it first got a postmaster and a post office. And the first postmaster was the original George W. Locke's grandson, Clay. Apparently, the Locke children and grandchildren played a huge part in the vices going on here in the underworld. And one of them had the nickname Vice King because according to police reports and records and newspapers, the Locks were involved in some of these brothels, including the Lockport Hotel, which was actually shut down <laughs> when it was raided. And this was the Lockport Hotel, a place so seedy it was shut down multiple times. Could you imagine being a night's watchman walking around here, avoiding the skunks? There was a few raids, big drug busts and gambling busts, but for a lot of the time, they kind of just left this place alone. This feels almost like you're in the bayou. It feels like the south. The Sacramento Delta region seems like the closest thing we have to the South in California. Second 
floor of this building was the Star Theater. Apparently the Star Theater here is only being held together by some cables on the inside, holding it upright. Well, not really upright. As close to upright as it can get. Legend has it that on certain nights you can actually hear the beautiful voice of a young woman emanating from these walls. In fact, a lot of people claim to hear singing late at night, but most reports seem to believe it comes from the Star Theater here. And there's a coinciding story of a young woman that used to perform here named Mei Lin. They said that Mei Lin disappeared, most likely murdered, and her body dumped into the river. So could it be Mei Lin's voice after being tragically murdered? Well, maybe. You know, only problem is there's absolutely no historical records that a Malin ever existed or a Malin ever disappeared here at the Star Theater or in Locke. But regardless if these claims are verified, if they're substantiated, if they're believed even, Locke has a ton of history here. It's worth exploring. It's worth digging into the history. So I don't know if there's spirits walking these alleyways, peeking their heads out of these doors to nowhere. But no matter which tales you believe or don't believe, there's no question that all these walls hold secrets, most of them lost to time, which I think lends itself to the tall tales, to the urban legends. Now I don't know if these streets are haunted. I don't know if a woman who went missing named Mei Lin is still singing from beyond in the Star Theater there. I don't know. I don't know if violent spirits will throw you up against the wall at the Dai Loi Museum. I don't know. I don't know any of it. What I do know is this history is fascinating. There's historical significance here. The stories are fun, they're entertaining. This is a town that sparks curiosity, sparks the imagination. This place is like nowhere I've ever been before. Come stay at the bed and breakfast, right on the main street. Check out the Dai Loi Museum. Go get some antiques at one of these various stores. This place is really cool. Watchmen, the Bok Bok men would walk these alleys. Make sure there's no fire. Anything crazy going on up, oh, kitty cat. What do you think, Steve-O? Pretty awesome place. Spooky, but in just like a fun way. So much of this history that I learned wouldn't be possible without a woman named Jamie Rubio. She did a ton of research on this stuff and has a great website with all sorts of stories and the sources that she got them from, from newspaper clippings to old police reports, things like that. And along with her, the proprietor of the bed and breakfast we're staying in, Martha Esch, gave me all kinds of history and facts. And it's all sourced very interesting history because this place was trying to keep its secrets. So a lot of that history is hard to find. <laughs> Dummy, I already did the robot. Really? <laughs> Thanks for watching our little variety show. You never know what you're gonna get. Every episode is something different. Check our history playlist. There's a bunch of cool historic videos I've done. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have a Patreon with a bunch of bonus content on there. Thanks to the Patreon subscribers that we have already. You guys are the best. Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things that cool kids do. Something or other tour for life. Oh, it's the spooky Disco Steve. Now that's the scariest spook that you'll find here in Locke. Hey, kitty. Steven, you ready to go? Oh wait, you're not Steven. Oh, sorry, Steven, I was talking to you. Goodbye, Diloy, and the spirits within. <laughs>